So just before we get started, I guess for the viewer's sake, we're going over moments that change skating. Is that sound kind of accurate? Yeah, I think I think that's the idea. The idea is uh, yeah. moments that help shape or change uh, the path of you know skating and the moments that have impacted and changed the history mm -hmm. and the people who have been uh, part of that. And you know, sometimes it's specific to tricks, sometimes it's specific to people, sometimes it's specific to events. But I think that's the general idea. So yeah, yeah we needed, we wanted to do that. And we obviously needed the help of the these gurus. two right here. Because, the gurus. Yeah, because yeah, me, gurus. me and you started off, and then we asked you guys, and then you guys just fucking went off with it. Oh and yeah. It was way over my head, at least. I don't know about Billy's too, but way over my head. No, totally. I was like, totally. I was like Let's, we're gonna split this up. So we're doing the early days now and then we'll do a more modern era version next next think, time yeah it, we just we just gotta be we just, we just have to make sure we we, we focus on how far we want to go yeah how like, well, and, and, and because there's this there, there's there's like fucking weird ending. stories of course that, yeah. like that did really affect if we really want to talk about the people that really start this that shit that when we were young they were so ahead and we didn't understand how there's a reason for that well so you guys it, shift like other decades yeah, if you want to go all the way to what happened in the late 60s and 70s and what happened when everything disappeared, and then, I don't know, we're in the 80s in Europe all the up, and then right there in the 90s happened, and then we got people like Tom Fry and all those people that we don't understand how good they are, but we don't know there was something happening <clears throat> that nobody find out because it was in the obscure. And it had to do with role baiting. That's why those guys were so fucking ahead of the time that we were like, and another, another thing too is uh, Miguel is roller skating. Like, mm -hmm. yes. When I started traveling for rollerblading, um, when I started traveling for rollerblading, roller skating was already, especially on vert, it was already doing progressive things that I don't think rollerbladers were doing. So, nope. that's yeah. that's someone that you know. Yeah. If I we go to back to 1970-something... <laughs> well, we could just talk about well, our world, you know, and how we were... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All well, I can say I, I let's start with this. Let's start with this. Before Tony Hawk, Mike McGill, and everybody do 540s on bird, that come from skating. And twist was Roller the, skating, yes. Mike twist, twist. And, stuff was, and sliding all weird, that's roller skating. Yeah. And then it well, it was the spider rolling too. That was like a thing. Yeah, and that comes. Rolling. That comes. Is that this? Actually, was, yeah, was, was spider surfing, roll the was, was yeah, spider yeah. roll the side I, surf? I, I, yeah, yeah, side stance. I was telling kind of you about that. Yeah. Coming from the source. Yeah. Okay, I coming mean, from the source, Duke Green. I, mean, I, I feel like I got in pretty early with the blading stuff, but uh, I really felt like when I was going Lausanne, like those days, there was stuff that I didn't understand. That yes. was happening, you know, like on on roller skates and on roller blades too. Like Tom Fry, like Miguel mentioned yeah. Tom Fry. Were there roller skating events? There was already Amazon? a thing happening, you know. Way like like two decades ahead of us. Yeah. It, basically, basically like this. You know why side stands like trap style roller skates come from? For surfing. Because the main, the only, the only object toy that moves sideways that all everybody was trying to imitate in land. In the land, in hard surface, what the originators was surfing because they're going sideways. So skateboarding is going sideways. Roller skating was going sideways because they're imitating the attacking of the wave, and they brought it oh, to yeah, bank yeah. and surfing. So everything started at the same time. BMX skateboarding and roller blade roller skating is a toy that they're trying to simulate surfing. Which is why there's bowls and stuff, right? Because the yes, bowls are simulating that's, weight, that, right? Exactly. And that's why the, that. those, those guys were skating side stands because they're front side and back side like a surfer because everybody's imitating those guys. That's why they were side stands. And also had to do with stability. It's a lot more stable to go side stand for all those people because they were surfers, some of them. Yeah. That makes sense? So makes anyway... Anyway, the guy playing the, the 540, Duke Greeny, all that. So all that, all, all that, all that stuff back in the happened. day, like that started on on roller skates. And then, yeah, and then they disappear in America because it was such a toy. The skates are being controlled by manufacturers, by big companies. Skateboarding had the way to get out of the toy business and start the skateboarding movement. Roller skating is still under the umbrella of, of toys, so they control it. So they never evolve in ramps. Ten yeah. years later, they stop. 
but Europeans saw that that happening, so they got it over there. It disappeared in America, but Europeans continued that through the 80s. And those mother in Australia, and those motherfuckers took it to the next level. Then, in, then they, they had the same situation. They couldn't manufacture skates for tricks because they were controlled by manufacturing factor companies. They just don't care about that. They wanted people just skating safely. So what happened? Remember, uh, Kenny Wainwright was one. Like Kenny yeah, Wainwright, yeah. he, he was doing. <laughs> oh my god! Rhymes yes. on skates and McTwist on skates. Like, and, and yeah, I was just, they, I was confused when I went to Lausanne. Yeah. I was just like, I thought this was a role playing contest, but there was. When was Lausanne, John? Uh, 90, uh, well, I was, I went to like maybe the third one. I don't even know, but I didn't go to the first one for sure. Yeah. That was an existing, uh, festival. So I think roller skating might've been the first, the yeah. first, uh, event that they threw because it was so prominent back then. Yeah. And was um, that just on the vert ramp or was that on the street course? Or? On the vert ramp that I know of. Yeah. There were street skaters, but I remember, so seeing, I remember seeing Brian Wainwright. Yeah. yeah, the old school videos back in the day, like the old school BGs. And he was in those on parts. He was yeah. always in those. Yeah. yeah. So there. Sorry, my kid. <laughs> I'm muting it. I'm muting it when he's freaking out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and and there was like, Bo Espel. Bo Espel. Bo Espel. Yeah. Bo Espel. Yeah. He was sick. He was, he was doing like technical grinds on roller skates, and then Renee Holgren. Yeah. Like, he was roller skating saying, first. W- w- was there a shift where yeah. uh, Renee there was who, and Bo? Yeah, Bo like, Espel. Bo Espel did like, Was Renee formerly yeah. like a, a quad skater? Did he skate on the roller skates? Yeah. Or did, yes. was he straight on blades? No, no Renee. No, Renee. Renee was Renee's roller, roller skater first. Yeah. And what about Tom Fry? Like you were saying, Tom Fry's been around a skateboarder. For a long time. Yeah. He, he was a skateboarder, but he was watching videos from Munich, Germany. They have the World Skateboard Contest. This is something I heard from Manuel the Leaders the other day. Manuel was like, Manuel was a roller skater, and his Manuel was like, I remember Tommy bringing this video from Munich, Germany, and I, it's true, I remember this video. It's a very contest that happened from from early 80s all the way to the almost 90s that the World Skateboard Cup have a roller skating World Cup too. And these mm-hmm. motherfuckers were pulling forward 900s on roller skates. Damn. And all those guys were from the era of Brian, Brian Wainwright, Boaz, Gold Rennes, Ty Chris, all those guys. They're, they have generations and everything in that thing. But what happened was that skateboarding took off because they were like, fuck the control from the companies. Let's make skateboarding our shit. Roller skating was like waiting for the miracle for these toy companies to come out with a, with a skate for do tricks. That never happened. So what happened at the same time in 19, 1987 to the early 90s, rollerblading came. And what happened? Rollerblading was a dance. Rollerblade was dancing and doing all this weird shit. But what happened mm. was that the only way to attract more people was to having a vert ramp. So all the roller skaters were like, let me try the blade so I can make money doing the shows. That's what San, uh, uh, Rafael Sandoz, Rene, mm. everybody did. They was like, the only way to, the roller skaters can make money was to jump a pair of blades so they can get hired by rollerblade to, do, to be the background of the vert shows. And that's right. early nineties. And that was Chris Edwards over here doing that too, jumping over cars and blah, blah, blah. So some of those guys just evolved into inline skate, just like a skateboard evolved to having nose and tail. The only right. way to evolve was catching up with, okay, the, the inline, now, now that is the future. So let's, they just jump on it. The other guys just stay around roller skating, but they disappear and fade away because they were never heard. Brian Wainwright tried so hard to come out with a roller skate that it was for tricks and no other companies accept it. So they just keep pushing their own cell. They're wearing hockey skates or random skate and making their own grand plates. But just like bling at the beginning to do aggressive. So, but the company never believes so blading just evolved right there. And Chris was the pioneer of actually real blading. Because there was people skating street. There was people sliding on rails and kicking rails on roller skates. But nobody gives a fuck about him because it was just yeah. a toy. They never put, they got never there had a chance to show themselves. There were people doing rails on roller skates, you're saying? You're saying there were people yes. doing rails, hand rails yes. on roller skates. Yes. I like that. Slashing, that, that sliding, kicking and shit. But then Chris wow. Edwards came, came up and he, him and Arlo were the ones that were like, they were the modern, like, all right, let's make this shit cool. And they, well, they pushed well, into the tarmac. There, okay. So, so, so okay, so that's that's a good place to start. Like yes, the <laughs> that of, is the start. Of, of yeah, that is the start, right? Huh? Um. So you were saying 
uh, Edwards and Arlo, right? But I like I nope. know even I know I'm not as like Duck I'm not boys. as OG as you. I know Arlo came Arlo came a little later, right? Yeah, Doug Boyce like, was the first one. <laughs> before Edwards, there was another Chris. Doug right? Boyce and AJ Jackson. Doug Who? Boyce, Doug Boyce, Doug, I believe, and AJ Boyce? Jackson. Yeah, and because AJ they Jackson were part of Team Rollerblade, team. but they were jumping. Team Rollerblade just focused on dancing, but they really want to do tricks. Mm -hmm. They were pushing in the middle of the shows when everybody in America was falling in love with Rollerblade was they were jumping and shit. So they were like, oh, this really brings people in. And they just found Chris Edwards, that he was in here in, in Escondido, skating Mike McGill's ramp, learning 540 Mike Twist because Mike McGill lives there. Chris Edwards was skating with these gnarly ass people in Bert. He was well, skating with Mike skate, McGill? Mike McGill and all these people. Who's Mike, That's McGill? Mike he, McGill is the guy who invented the Mick Twist. Yes, oh, okay. I mean, he was the one that saw a roller skater doing it in the late 80s and uh, in copy and then call it the McTwist. Let's just yeah. put that clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said and, that too. And, I, think, and, I, think he, I think he talked about that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Chris grew up watching all these rippers on Bird and, and he saw the possibilities of like doing handrails and he took it. That's when Chris was like, Chris is a gnarly dude. He was <laughs> like, all right, fuck it. Let's fucking take it to like, and we find out that you can really go really big on skates and that was the, the mentality of it. That's when really, I think the blading that we know that is fucking gnar came from. Like, Chris being like a fucking hasher, be like, I'm gonna fucking do send it. <laughs> I think that's why that mentality, I think, from what it is right now. I mean, for what it goes to it, like, the possibilities, I think, was Chris, like, the rocket, like, going fucking, and like, <laughs> and it make, I don't know, it, that's what I saw. Then it's like the evolution of like, what, it, what Arlo brought and all that shit, and everything just, I don't know. Yeah. Think yeah. of like specific tricks that Chris did that influenced skating I mean, or like push it to the next level. Well, I mean, we all know when he grind that fucking rail, that red rail. What red uh, rail? Uh, no, I think it was uh, there to air, I think it was. Uh, oh, oh yeah, 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 with the grass on the side. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like yeah. he was jumping, then, then, came, then he did it and he was landing, it was cool, it was still really flashy and weird looking. For me, at least, when I saw Chris, I was like, oh, that's cool. But well, he's still looking like those guys are dragging their knees. Yeah, yeah. You can tell on the landing. Because this is, this is funny. When I first saw rollerblading, I was like, that's lame. Really? What, the knee drag? Because of the knee. I thought that, that was in so cool, cool, man. Yeah. I got yeah. to in, 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 in Puerto Rico, where people with spandex and doing that whole shit. And I was like, oh, whoa, that could be something. But now I was like, that's whack. I was like skateboarding and roller skating and rollerblading, jumping on shit and doing grinds. And I was like, that's cool, but they look like fucking futuristic fuckers. Yeah. And then I saw Chris, and I was like, that's cool. But then I saw Arlo, and I was like, fuck, this is it. Because he brought the fucking, the, the, the thing that you don't, you don't, you don't really, under, people don't understand, like the style, that the whole thing, that you cannot talk about. It's just something that you feel. I, mm -hmm. That was Arlo. He brought the attitude. He brought the He style. brought the fucking thing. I think, I think my opinion, that's when I was like, fuck. Like this, but this like, was the this was so this was the era when like be, like I remember seeing Arlo on MTV Sports. He had like a little before that. Before that, yes, before that. Well, my, my first right. my first influence, I mean, was was definitely Chris Edwards. But and it, it was like for but for me, it was more like he was like Superman. Yes, you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't attain what he was doing. You, yeah. I couldn't like visualize myself doing what he was doing. Because in there to air, he was already doing big rails. And then in Airborne, he was doing, he was skating transition and jumping stairs. Yeah. Remember that stair yeah. jump he was doing? Yeah, yeah. Like, that, was yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, man, that was like the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, it was like, dude, I want to do that. But how <laughs> that do you was do the that? coolest thing. That's so yeah. scary, probably. Or you're going, you're going down the hill was scary on skates back then, you know? Yeah. yeah. Going, down, going down the San Francisco hills was like, that was like frightening. But he was just mm -hmm. jumping these stairs like. He did his power stock kicking out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that whole like, montage. He was almost like that a whole, skier. Yeah. That's what so that whole montage, like, I, I watched that recently where he yeah. starts his skating bit, like, jumping yeah, yeah. on the houses. And, mm -hmm. and then, like, he ends the whole thing and, like, he's picking yeah. up, you know, BMXs and skateboarders. That's one of the coolest things. Yeah, that was it for me. That was it for it's me and my whole cool. crew. Yeah, same. Like, yeah. I remember, and you, it's funny you mentioned the knee slides, but that was, like, a big thing for us. Yeah, for my crew, like we like, too. we want to do the knee slides. We won't get bonus <laughs> pads. Yeah, we pads. want knee slide in. But then we were like, yeah. dude, those pants are expensive. They're like a yeah. hundred bucks, you know. Yeah, They're like, oh, totally <laughs> it's like when you got that, you were like, you had status, you know. 
And then all my buddies, they ended up doing it. They ended up getting it. They spent the hundred bucks, or it was eighty bucks. Yeah, I, 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 I saw knee slides and I saw the squeeps and then the downhill, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. I was like, I can ski here. I can see that. It feels cool. But it was all these shit stair bashing happening. Yeah, that's cool. But and, and, and you see it, yeah, yeah, but then you see Arlo, and then you see like the proper stance of landing and the style and the and the whole attitude behind, like you know, and, and that's when that's when like Chris definitely opened the door, like get the fuck out of here, let me fucking go head first. But then Arlo and Tom and these guys come in and I was like, I, I can do that. I can relate to that. That's there's fucking like a, there's rad. A, there's a definitely a sense of like suburbia, maybe because of the movie, or Chris was more of like this kind of vibe, I thought. Like, they built him, yeah. That's they, a surfer. they have this kind of like, cool. yeah, surfer, like tr- suburban, yeah. kind of hero guy. And then comes this street, edgy, bald dude, yes. just trying the biggest rails, not giving a fuck, just, yeah. you know? And well, that was all about So then after that, it was just kind of like, I want to be that guy, you know? Yeah, like, that was it. That was it, yeah. And he took, he, he just took it on his shoulders and yeah. everybody it's wanted like to see it. shit and like looking I, I, I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you guys something personal because, okay, we're, I want to get into Arlo because that's such a, a big thing, but you guys both have like, I don't, rem- Tom Fry's influence didn't hit me like it, it did you guys because yeah, I'm from like me just that later generation and yeah, the way you guys like, talk about Tom Fry, you're like Tom, Tom, and I, I like, I think a lot of people, like, I don't really get it, but like to you guys, like yeah. he's obviously so I kind of, but I noticed he was in like you know the first Daily Bread, and he obviously had like this big impact. So I was curious if you could like expand on like what his contribution. Well, I, go, was. I mean, Miguel, I I can go real quick. I'll do a short one, and then Miguel will definitely expand. <laughs> yeah, um, go go. <laughs> he's, your, he's, your, he's your hero, and he's my hero too. Uh, but there's a certain there's a certain type of skating that still exists to this day, that you can appreciate. Um, and he, and he, he, there's only a few guys who can stand the test of time and you can put his skating in the early nineties and put it in him now. And it's still better than a lot of shit that's out, you know? And, and I think I mentioned the original ATV was, was him. Maybe I did or didn't, but he was the original AT, all terrain skater. And not only was that, he was that, but he also invented like, the tricks he invented the fish brain he invented the flat spin he did stuff and maybe it was his influence on skateboarding or whatever and his with his friends they were all pro skateboard or whatever it was at the time but he was doing stuff like back then, like then that transcend now more than a lot of things you know that people are doing yeah. so it's and not only that i mean his personality and yeah yeah, he's, uh, he's a very he's a very um rebellious dude like yeah fucking sick <laughs> like you talk about rebellious and uh, alternative he might not be vocal you might not even know about it now because people just are are younger but he was like no fuck that that sucks like, yeah and, and he would hold to it and and you just be like tom relax dude like no fuck that i, I it's not cool and, and yeah. that's <laughs> that's whole, that's in all of us you know yeah, he's the he's yeah, the original, yeah. in my opinion, he's the original. Fuck that dude, like fuck. Damn. Yes, independent 100%. dude. Hundred yeah. percent. I never. Heard I, that. I guess I'll leave that. I'll let it go to Miguel now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go when I met him, and then I'm gonna go back when the first time I saw him. Like yeah. basically, when I first saw him like skating, I was like, he was just ripping. He knew how to skate. Scotty told me not a while ago that Cosmo Wheels came out from testing wheels to sell it to the hockey people. So Tom was really good at hockey. So he knew how to stop and shuffle. So that's that's like the roots from uh, from Tom. Like he he got the skateboarding and the hockey, right? So when I first saw Tom in footage of the uh, '94 Nice and uh, in first BG, I saw him doing these things that is not trying to put a show. He's thinking like behind the something. He was like coming a fakey, spinning three this way, keeping a line fakey, not striding all crazy, like making eight wheels touching flat and pumping. And I was like, fuck the world. This is <laughs> it for me. Like 
the, 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 the art of actually the actual skating yes part, you yeah. know like yeah. oh and be able to go spin both ways and yes. spin backwards and grind with both feet and spin in and out and then do like you know like there's something to say about invert when you do too many flips it's like it's whack right it's like dude you yeah. just did another flip you did another flip another flip and, and tom understood like it's not about flipping it's about a kind of a process of skating that, that yeah. should be appreciated a kind of vocabulary of skating like we do in the street that should be appreciated and he was doing it he was 360 <laughs> top filling in and out and and you know faking inverting in and out and the oh the different ways that no one can do it and i don't even know what they call it eggplant or i don't know sad i don't know what you call it you know yeah, yeah. there's all kinds of names that he, he, and all. yeah he invented all that stuff but yeah. anyway and he went from people were just pucking it to he was like bringing like a whole whatever like yeah. I, I would imagine like some of that would be skateboard influence like a lot of that yeah influence. definitely like, definitely yeah. and also, also that is something that i saw from him when i saw him skating then like whatever it's like a for me it knocks on my brain when like it's more he seeing him skating showed me that it was more than just the tricks and the things that you can do there's a it's a it's a personal uh Skating is such a body action that when you do tricks, the, the body talks. It's like, I don't care about impressing you. I'm fucking doing me. Fuck, get there. I'm, I, this feels good. Like, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just you would whatever. Root, I would root for that. You would root for that. Like, you yeah. Know, you would see yeah. Cesar do the crazy big backflip, but then you're like, dude, Tom, you know, like, this, yeah. is, this, is, some, this is something different, you know? He didn't give a fuck. He was yeah. doing him. And I was like, yeah. that guy's sick. Yeah. Then I met him in Nice '96, and he was comp competing in that day. And he didn't show up for the contest. He just stick around skating around the contest, just hitting the ledges and shit. And I saw him. I said, like, "Oh my God, it's Tom Fry!" So I spent all Sunday just watching him skate, following his ass. And they're gonna call him to compete, and he's like, "He just keeps skating, doing his thing. They mm -hmm. compete, and I'm skating with him. And he's yeah. like, "Oh, take care, homie, buddy. Uh, take yeah. care, mate. I'm gonna meet up with this chick." Like, yeah. And he just left the contest to continue his lifestyle. He didn't give yeah. a fuck about the contest. He won X Games the year before. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah. He was just there to skate and fucking live the experience. So he, he, of was like, he was like the original cool guy. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. That right there, when I saw like that the first, You know what's like, even cooler about him is that, that you guys don't get it now, now yeah. you know? Because that's, that's yeah. like, that he's is. the coolest motherfucker in role playing ever, probably. I, I always. <laughs> fucking cool that When yeah. I saw that shit, I was like, fuck yeah, fuck contest. I'm going to every contest to fuck girls and meet my homies and fuck the world. <laughs> this is sick. I'm sorry, I'm not saying, but I'm gonna be a hesher. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna fucking play. I don't care. Yeah. That right there, that 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 was the whole thing that I saw from Tom. I was like, that's a lifestyle. You know, that's like that's he was the first one being a lifestyle like role players, just being like a hesher and just be like, I'm getting high and gonna go fish paint the fucking world like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally, shit. Totally, yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah, if that, that was translated day. over to like videos and magazines and stuff though, because like Billy said, like I never thought about it that yeah. I know who's pre Tom he is. was pre pre sections. He was pre sections. Yeah. Like, he didn't make a section. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. 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 He yeah. didn't have like just, that epitome of like, oh, that was my best section or that would have been or Yeah. Yeah. He it just, is so he sad. Was sad. I never thought about that. Yeah, he was so sad before. because the first basically the first, let me see. Maybe the first six years or four years of rollerblading this this toy was invaded by this mentality of making money that let's create a circuit let's make people on the tv understand what skating is and they just sell skates and just use the pros there in the moment and chew them out and spit them out and get the next ones yeah we lost, got, we lost got six, yeah. yeah so we lost these first six years i believe six years of blading there was some cool shit that really built culture right and thanks to John that fucking invented the NYTA and all this thing that he brought the culture. But other than that, the skating manufacturers were just selling skates to make people understand and just grab the skates and take off. There was no like, this is the skate, but mm -hmm. this guy did this and you should be in love about this. And you should like, there was no talk communication about uh, getting involved with a culture. I was lucky enough that I saw that and I got, in, I got Robert in touch my heart, but if I didn't I, see that, I would be doing yeah. something else that, you know? <laughs> I don't want to, like, downplay, like, you guys not, not understanding him because it's – Yeah, yeah, It's not no. – I'm not trying to downplay that, but I'm I also, admit but it. He, totally. But he, he is, like – his influence is still, to this day, you can see it. Yeah. 
like the test of time. Look at all the, the, the amazing skaters that came out of Australia because of him. No, mm -hmm. it's like you know? Australia's he's, got he's one of the, the coolest OG best teams. CJ. Yeah. He's the OG Tim Ward. He's the OG yeah. any, anybody at uh, Gavin Jerome. Like he's the OG. Yes. He's the one yeah. that was already doing yeah. it before everybody, but they followed him. They they know his lineage. They know no. I, I, I totally like remember his skating and like BG6 yeah. and like seeing things like that. I just yeah. I started yeah. just like a couple years. I totally get that though. Yeah, I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but like yeah. and you you guys explaining it like right now like makes a ton more sense. I'm like I'm starting yeah. to like see his tricks and be like, oh yeah, you know, okay, I get Man that. Man, the day it's also I had so much fun with him. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, it totally, was right? a wild guy. He had the craziest yeah. times in Australia scoring. He's like a Dion Anthony Ryan Jacklone kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That, that, those are the things like the Jack clones, the Dion's, the Tom's, like yeah, all, all that thing, man. Like it, uh, I'm glad that I was addicted to rollerblading, so I searched for those things deeply. I even though I didn't know them, but I kind of trying to catch up and see. But yeah. we lost the opportunity to showcase a culture for so many years that it's so sad that we they like whoever was in charge didn't give a fuck about that. And it's had to be 25 years later that we kind of talk about it. It's kind of bones me, but it's, it's cool that at least we saw it and we understand we can continue saying that like, how cool this shit really is since the beginning. But there was yeah. no attention towards the right thing, which is happening now, I'm glad. But, you know, I mean, there's so much cool history that yeah. it was never told. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, this, the Jump Streets, you know, is a big yeah. part of that. You guys yeah. kind of went mean, to Australia yeah. often and, like, you hit up Scotty <laughs> and you did that and... yeah. And just and Scotty coming Scotty back. Co -host. That's a huge I want to co-host. <laughs> What's that? You were co-hosting. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. the, the, the connection of like totally the time, you know what I mean? It's yeah. definitely. What was with and Australia? Mike, I, sorry, random thought. Mike Tyson's coming back. You see that? I saw the video. Yeah, it was oh, crazy. Mike, Mike Tyson can box right now. <laughs> We're just watching that. Crazy too. <laughs> I feel bad for his pad man. Oh my god, his pad man. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, oh my god, it's gotta be True. so tough. Destroying him. Anyway, I just thought like Tom Fry is gonna be Mike Tyson. Just don't worry, he's coming back. So you gotta get yeah. that new knee. Yeah, he got. You know, it's funny. Like he got, got that new knee. Him. The photos yeah. that I see of Tom Fry, he looks like you know. Healthy and shape. Yeah. He looks like he yeah. so well, that's that. Um, Miguel mentioned it. It's that hockey stance, you know. Yeah. Yes. Ad Broscow and and Danny Beer and like this. Hey. It's like they got this hockey, you know. Uh, it's like kind of in thing. the blood, you know, control. Yeah, it's, this science behind anything else that is just a that 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 motion. They know how to make the motion, you know. But don't don't get me wrong. Yes. I, I'm not saying like the people that learn how to salt run before skating backwards, they need to do something because they brought the flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that is the that is like key. It's it's not that that I hate when old uh, people that call themselves OG call saying like, oh, this kids needs to learn how to skate. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they will learn eventually. Uh -huh. Let them let them be themselves. They're gonna learn. You know. <laughs> like, so you don't believe in, you don't believe in the whole. You have to like. You should know how to skate properly before you start jumping on tricks and shit. Fuck no! I believe <laughs> you have to do whatever the fuck you want, and then I'm gonna call you out when you look like shit skating, and then you'll fix it. But it's not like Figure you should be right or yeah. wrong. That's what we all do it. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be a right or wrong. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. If you're a right or wrong, fuck off. Let's go play a team sport. Like that's why yeah. everybody becomes sick. Because then there's this yeah. guy that can barely fucking push, but he can fucking fish when your ass, and that's John. <laughs> <laughs> and he that made me. a fuck. He 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 brought break dancing stance. He brought a fuck you. I'm <laughs> on my way in fish ring, and everybody was like, "Holy fuck!" So I'm a fan okay, of okay, because of the stance. Okay. But then it's like JJ that made like he put the fucking sauce on it. <laughs> okay, so hang on. I got it. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I know. Because we're doing like this timeliney. We're we're doing like this timeliney thing, and uh, so we're talking about Tom Fry, and then so John, oh, you were looking Lord. to Arlo, right? Yeah. So I remember seeing me. I remember seeing Arlo on MTV Sports. He had like yeah, the yeah. Three different haircut thing. We had like the, the halo, chops. the horns, and, like the <laughs> yeah. chops. Oh, right? definitely. And I was already. I was, like, oh I was already. God, this guy. I was already stalking him by then. <laughs> yeah, at that point, I was like, "This guy's a total freaking rock star." And yeah. oh my god, I love blading. I'm a blader now. That's it. And like, 
Because before I was a blader, but I wanted to be, so I was like a poser blader, but I had to like try to get in there. But um, yeah, so right around that time, John, you were like, that's when you started. I mean, I, I was seeing you in Hoax 2. So you were like right up there skating with him. So like, you obviously have like a huge impact on like the history of, of blading and like Gerardo. So like, what was that like uh, through your eyes? Like, and looking at Arlo directly and seeing him on MTV sports and being a part of the scene, knowing that like, Oh wow. This is a very real tangible moment where Arlo, you know, Arlo was scared of the shotgun rails in Hawks too. And John was doing so to far side. So what's up? Right. Oh, okay. yeah, that's not that story. <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was it's surreal like it's like anything if you if you meet your hero like yeah it's weird what's that the situation do. those shotgun rails that yeah, you i was like bro i was shaking i met him i didn't know what to do <laughs> was they, that the they, first they, time actually, they actually put me in the uh, winnebago with with him and like the camera and all this and then brooke was i think brooke was interviewing me and i don't know what the hell i said but i was <laughs> I was pissing my pants. I didn't know what was going on because Arlo was like right there, you know. Because at that right. time, it's so real. At that it's time, so weird. it's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's like so real. It's my hero, yeah, yeah. like he's in front of me. Like that is heavy. Yeah, yeah, it was really heavy because, and then he couldn't jump on the rail, which was I was. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't jump on it, or he didn't want to. It was, it was not a long he tried. Time. He tried. He tried. No way. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> I would not jump on those rails. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, no, it was, it wasn't, it, it was just like a, a surreal experience. And then, um, yeah, that was really sick, by the way. When I saw you yeah. skating on those shotgun rails in that video, I was like, whoa, that, that's, yeah. that's like their show that you can skate, like, it doesn't matter. You can just skate some weird shit and make it work. And that was like Hawks 2, like a little, yeah, those Hawks 2 clips, John, were, were legit, man. You yeah, have like exactly. some of the most legit tricks in that video. I don't know about that. I, it, it, that definitely was a big turning point for my life because I got uh, I got hooked up after that. Like, and, like, and like were, you, were you committed at that point? Like, were you like, okay? This oh, I is, was committed to skating. Yeah, yeah. I was. I'm I shouldn't have been there. The, yeah. I should have been at school. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Did you, yeah, school? I should have oh, been yeah. at school. I should, I, I'm pretty sure I was supposed. To, well, not maybe not that day, but the next day, I definitely skipped school because they end up going to Stanford. And there was, a, there was a big Stanford scene in that video that I should have been at school at. But actually, all those kids should have been at school. <laughs> did you hear that they were in <laughs> town? <laughs> How did you meet up with them? Did you hear that they were in town or you were just oh, like, they found me. Like, they, they found, found you. Me. Yeah. They, uh, I think I might have been in VG already. And then they had heard about me. And then um, it was all around the same time as VG, the early VGs. So I think it was VG2, VG3. Mm -hmm. So it was like pretty early on. Um, That's crazy hunting people down. I was like just that. a grommet, dude. Like I said, like yeah. Miguel said, that guy, I was that guy who couldn't skate tranny. I couldn't barely skate backwards. So I was just grinding. <laughs> well, he fucking skate shotgun rails with no I never knew that. Gear. That's what no, we were just, all we had. Right we didn't have parks. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but we didn't have. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like... no, like. Ho hoax 2 was definitely like one of the videos like I, I feel like was a huge shift and like the turning yes. point of like what changed the history of blading it like was a whole you look back now and it's hard to imagine it being this way but it was like such a change and like refinement of how tricks were done and how people were presenting themselves yeah. and how there was like kind of like a uniform image of how we all dressed and identified they, like, they reached they not have the blades on and be like that's yeah. a blader you know yeah, yeah. They connected. They connected the nation. They they brought the scenes together in that video, and yeah, um, and then they brought the personalities, you know, within themselves. That's what it they was. Were, the personalities. One of them were, they brought something huge to the table. You know, B Love, Brooke, Brian Smith, Michael Pollack, You know, and obviously Arlo. Yeah, they they brought it. Yeah. It was like a real world. It's a movement. They brought. They yeah, brought. Yeah. It. And, yeah, and, and definitely, and that's a big yeah. moment in skating. Like that. For me, besides VG, which definitely, you know, I think VG was for the community and for, and you know what I mean? Like they, street skating and they, they did such a great job documenting the time. Um, and this video, the hoax video, this brought the community together and, and they brought the personalities within that video to, that you wanted it to, yeah. to see and feel and be a part of. So um, huge, huge 
I mean, anyone that during that time was influenced yeah. by that video for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. kids can't identify with that video. I think have that video, so like Andy, Tom, yeah, Steve Tom, dude. Tom, the Tom tricks in there too, like a uh, wedge Jack first Shimizu. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. A uh, wedge did you first Shimizu in that video, and he did the and kind you, grind. You kind grind too, kind first time grind in that video. Yeah, and he did a top so the legit top yeah. so too. True Mizu though. Like, yeah, true Mizu. Marble edge against the wall. Like, yep. pretty, well, laced, too. pretty laced. I that. Yeah. And um, Tom, like, Tom and Andy, like, in bringing them into it, like, they, they had this style also. They, they had a, a original vibe and their own language. And you can see yeah. it how they skated, but they, had, they, they literally have their own language. But, like, <laughs> yeah. they, talk about um, personality and, and, they, they just yeah. brought they brought something different to skating. Yeah, we and can that identify. Was plus for me too. Yeah. That that right there show like having those guys on that bus in the tour in those different styles. That's what a lot of kids around the world were like. They identified with Arlo or Mike or or B Love. Like they the kid that was the first time the world have an opportunity to identify themselves with rollerblading, which is was the best thing after Daily Bread, you know. And you can see other guys and be like, this is sick. Before that, we didn't have that. I mean, we were just like, you know, like going and kind of searching and, oh, this guy's sick or whatever. But yeah. those two things were the first movement of like, like corporation move a little bit. Here's the guys. Here's the guys. He's, you know, this is the Beatles. This is that Zeppelin. This is fucking, you know, all, those, all these personalities that be like, I'm a fan of that. I can identify it was definitely, that. definitely true, man. And there's definitely a, a blank canvas back then of, of what can yeah. you possibly do in sk- on skates, you know? Like, <laughs> what, what, like, there's so many things that haven't been tried yet. And, yeah. And, um, because of that whole time frame, it was definitely an experimental time, too. Like, it was confusing maybe sometimes like some stuff was probably really whack but you had you to had, figure it out you had to at least try it you had you, yeah. know, you had to you have to get you know, out i'm get i'm out. guilty as you know it's charged like i did the sidewalk but it was it was okay. never been done i was like maybe this yeah. is a trick <laughs> yeah i can't that, wait for the day that sidewalks that i can't wait to yeah i love that I can't wait for the day that sidewalks is everything is coming full full circle now. I can't wait for the day <laughs> sidewalks come back and John could finally be like, "Yes, I'm proud of the sidewalk." Because every time I hear I'm you talk actually, about I'm it, I'm actually I'm proud of it. Oh, so I'm saying every time I, you'll be fucking proud of that. Shit. You should, because yeah, really every time you talk about it, you yeah. like it doesn't sound like you are. You sound yeah. like you're like you make fun of oh, yourself. Oh, I, 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 it's definitely a, um, it's definitely a whack trick. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> feel like it's not it's not that cool for sure. But I think I'm more proud of the. The concept of like um it's like you're wearing this like weird dick you know i don't know like I, I tell daisy you right dukes now. or something and then you got everyone wearing daisy dukes you know what i mean yeah, yeah. So think I, got everybody, I got everybody wear daisy dukes for like <laughs> a year got it. <laughs> and i actually won a few contests wearing those daisy dukes <laughs> you, like, you think that's how the box, that's what brought the whole thing like by like thinking outside the box was bring was is yeah. gonna yeah. bring yeah. having the uh, options of like you know everything was everything was in a box like fitness fitness yeah. game aggressive tricks and there was no it was all control but you're doing cyborgs and doing whatever the fuck you want you're thinking outside the box and that's how blading really came out mm-hmm. you know bladers back then see a cyborg they were like inspired it was not what they make you eat it's somebody eating a dish something different so everybody's like jumping on that that's cool that's an option mm-hmm. like i'm glad you i'm glad you did the fucking cyborg doing more of the fuck <laughs> <keep doing it. laughs> you it's needed like, the marks in your skate to show that you could do sidewalks <laughs> and shit <laughs> the buckle scratches and shit yeah. <laughs> But it was not just a side. Well, come on, you were it's, doing it's, fucking it's rocket definitely a, um, <laughs> It was definitely a, a experimental time, like the mid-90s. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, oh. that's definitely it. But the I crazy totally thing is, like, just going back to Tom again, you know, like, he was already, he was doing it, man. Like, Fish, Tom Fry. Fish, he's mm-hmm. the second, he was the, we used to call him Fish because <laughs> he used to smoke so much weed. And, uh, 
he invented the fish. We, he, that's why it was called the fish brain because he would just get so high and stoned and I don't know. What, I think it was Jess who, named, who nicknamed him his fish. Yeah. yeah. And, he folks, that's how he made the trick. He named, yeah, he invented the fish brain. So like that was, that's why we called him fish. But That's a sick name. <laughs> I never heard anyone actually call him fish. I knew that was his thing. I never actually heard people call him fish. Yeah. And he had like yeah. the fish logo on his shirts and stuff. A fish. Yeah, he, said he had a fish story. brain. Because the, the brain of the fish forgets things really quick. So that's why it was yeah. fish yeah. brain. Um, yeah, that's tongue. That like you have a fish brain. Like you, you did a fish. Yeah. Brain, you did a you did a flat spin. You can't remember. You did a top spin for the. You don't remember. So they really. That's the <laughs> what, 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 what about the stoner. porn What about the porn star? Who's responsible for that? Um, Phil Riley, right? Phil Riley, Phil name? Riley. Yeah, I mean, is it Phil Riley? Am I wrong? <laughs> I could yeah. be wrong. I feel like Phil Riley did. Okay. He did a I mean, what, what you porn say, star at um. CDM, well, why that name out of all names? He should have said Eddie, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why he thought of that name, but he, I think so I he's the Mizu first person to do it. Mizu. Mizu, Mizu, was a, Mizu was a Machio, right? Yes. Mizu, they're both Japanese. Yeah. They're both Japanese. Means water. In Japanese, and Machio is after Machio, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. After, after the Chris Mitchell and Angie went to, uh, to, yeah. to Japan for a tour, yeah. They made skaters over there, and they just started deciding naming tricks after people. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> and they came after that trip, and they start yeah. daily bread, pretty much. So yeah. What, when did that start? Because was that before hoax two? After hoax two? Like, yes, way first? before. Way, way before. before. Yeah. Yeah. It was way before. What was yeah. the first? Was it yeah. before the first? Well, because I know hoax two is ninety five. So like first daily bread ninety three. Ninety three. Ninety three. That long ago. Yes. Yeah. Wow, I know you had yeah. the whole story on that. I don't know if you wanted to get into that. That start of daily bread and all yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You need to talk to the people that did it. I don't uh, want to yeah, say you, nothing. I know. I don't know if you wanted to talk about it or not. You you sounded like you had a whole story, and then you were like, "Wait a minute, I'm not 100 percent sure about this." <laughs> because it's such a long time ago that I heard this thing. You know, it's such yeah. a long as time that like you I don't want to spread right, false rumors wrong. or something. I wanna I wanna believe it's right. Because yeah. it makes total sense, you know. Because that's what it started a whole movement. Like, should I talk about it? you? Should you should interview Angie? What about that? So Angie, we'll we'll, we'll save it. You. We'll save it. Yeah, for interview that. Part of it interview that. That'd be okay. for Angie. Angie, yeah. Yeah. story. So yeah. so much okay. to go back there. We got six. Yeah, that's years a that's a whole yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll do that yeah. another, another time. Let's. There's six years of jump jump street podcast that you can do. Oh, of course. <laughs> totally of course. Right. I can talk I mean, my first, I can my first daily bread was uh, uh, the one in the bank, at the Brooklyn Banks. It was Dave Ortega doing a soul grind, the, pur the Purple Haze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you oh, saw that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that was my was first. Sure. And for the, oh, yeah. I think it was labeled the wrong person, too. I think it was labeled yeah, the yeah. Or something. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave <laughs> <it was laughs> mentioned thing. that when he was on it. He said his name wasn't yeah. on it. And it was skeptical because you can't see his face in the picture either. Mm -hmm. So you can't well, really prove it. You know? I, knew, I knew that stance. <laughs> yeah. So that was definitely Omega. So yeah. uh, <laughs> that, what year was that? I think that came out already. And I just. I said in 94, I believe. 94, yeah. End of 94. Yeah. So like yeah. during that period for me, like I was just finding skate shops. There was a skate shop called Inline Sports and they just had hockey and rec stuff. And they had a little aggressive, they didn't have aggressive skates yet. They think they might've just got the TRS, but they had the hoax video there. It was so oh. weird. It was kind of like the in the suburb. One? Hoax one, yeah. The hoax? And they had, they had um, Daily Bread, that purple haze. And I just snatched them real quick. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like- That's cool back was, then. To have yeah, media, yeah. To have media of any weird. back then. Yeah. It was weird. And then I just remember maybe two years after that, that's inline sports turn into four inline sports like and i would just go to every single one of them like just to hang out <laughs> so your first video was hoax Each. one my first video um dare to air oh dare to air okay yeah dare to air okay. um and then i think airborne came out around the time or was ready out mm -hmm. and, it came out and, after that yeah it came out after that and then it was yeah. like hoax and it was just like oh shit this is like yeah. This is I'm into this. This is this is a, I'm I'm in a life for now after watching Hoax One. So yeah, he's legit. Did you see VG One? What's that? Did you see VG One video group? Video group. I did. I did. I did. And that was um, 
That was the Australian issue. And, that, and you can see Makio in that, the first Makio grind. They went to Japan in that one. Um, the, the original Australian crew, um, Cal, um, who's actually an actor. He's in um, 300, and he's a famous person in Hollywood. And then John Pollard was in that. Um, there's a few, there's a few players that became famous people. Like, yeah. like uh, he was it Dean <laughs> Jagger. Yeah, he was in uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Cal, oh, Cal is actually still an actor. He's in a, he was in a lot, he's still in a lot of movies. And um, Scotty always says like when he comes back here we'll like link up with him. But yeah, I think that's true. Was, he, he, tried to, he tried to link up with Cal this like last playing cup, but I don't know, it didn't work out. But um, yeah, Dean Jagger, he's in uh, Game of Thrones, right? I think. That's crazy. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's yeah. like a main character there, but. Actually, I'll, I didn't I'll, know I'll, yeah, I'll, like uh, I'll say this stuff was pretty cool. Like I saw, like I've never watched an episode of Game of Thrones, but um, John Ortiz and him are like friends. So like John Ortiz posted a photo of like me skating, and he was like, "Sick photo!" Uh, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <to> him? <laughs> <laughs> That's dope." Because like, I used yeah. to watch him in like the old school videos, like him yeah. and his brother Ben. Yeah, yeah. And, I uh, used to kill the contest too. I remember the UK. Were so uh, good, yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Really, they're both good. Yeah, they were like <laughs> tough dudes, man. You didn't want to like. They were like you didn't want to mess with them. They were just no. Like, look at them now. Yeah. Dudes, <laughs> like intimidating. They were intimidating. They were kind of like, I don't know what part of England they're from, but I think it was from a. No, it might have been Liverpool, right? but they're from Liverpool. Liverpool, right? Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool was yeah. like, yeah. Tough, tough, <laughs> like you didn't want to mess with those dudes. You're like, yeah, that's sick. <laughs> uh, I want to keep yeah, it moving here because uh, we have so many topics still to cover from what we have. Yeah. We covered a lot of it already. All just kind of naturally flowed, but I'm going to bring up one right now that Miguel brought up. It was uh, Annie Schemp on the cover of Inline Skate Magazine, 94. You put that down for one of the... Uh, that was an iconic photo for me, too. Like, uh, explain explain yeah. that. Thanks. No, I, didn't even know this. I didn't even know this until you guys mentioned it. Brooklyn so, Banks. Uh, yeah, Jesse, right? I mean, forgot his name on. What's his name? Forgot his name on. Huh? The guy who shot it? or No, no, the, the guy doing the soul grind. Jesse, what's his name? Jesse? Ani Shemp? The, the guy that was doing the, the soul grain, the picture. The New Yorker. Yeah, Ani Shemp. Ani. Yeah, yeah. Ani, 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 Ani. Yeah, who, who in turn was a famous DJ uh, yeah. for D-Light. Yeah, that really shows good style right it. there. He's actually, yeah, he, he was doing in-spin top soles on big stuff and grabbing into them before. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. He's probably the first to ever do it. Yeah. No, that's why it's like so good. Like we, we watch, I watched Fast Shoes the other day. It's so good to watch the old videos because I think sometimes yeah. naturally you're like, oh, that stuff, like it's old. It wasn't good. But no, yeah. there's some stuff from the old school that is so like hash and yeah. refined and stuff yeah. like that. I had so many Dude. ideas from watching Fast Shoes too. Like I wanted to do shit again. Like it was inspiring. I don't even remember Fast <laughs> Shoes. Who's on the cover of Fast Shoes? Cover? It was just a picture of shoes. It wasn't anybody. Oh, yeah, those Black Martin. Yeah, right. Brian, Brian Smith was on the back. Brian Smith. Hey, I want to say, I wanna say something. About... I want to say something really quick. Sorry. You know, this whole oh, no. movement with, like, power blading and skating through the city, like, like mm -hmm. a, how you call it, freestyle? Free Motherfuckers, skating. just watch there to air. Yeah. I was rollerblading. Or anything in the 90, early 90s. Yeah, like, we've been, we've been skating. Like, <laughs> full circle. And we've been skating. Like, a little salsa moving, dancing. You know, start bashing and just, like, <laughs> dancing and moving all weird in the middle of the fucking skating yeah. to the street. It's nothing new. We call mm -hmm. it power blade. It's so cool. It's just skating, man. It's skating. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, skating. just do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, just well, skating. Let's, let's go back to that. <laughs> yeah. that, that but I'm glad it came back. I'm glad it came back because people this era learn how to skate because the big wheels came back. So now they learn how to skate. Yeah, they know how to so, skate. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. No, <laughs> I wonder, Ani, Ani was like, uh, yeah. it's kind of a bummer because he had... In my opinion, he had that sick New York style. Yes. Like you, know, you guys have, and but and he was doing like, like that those progressive tricks, mm -hmm. down the big rail and the banks. You know that that. Was I never crazy. knew know that pitch was from the banks. You can't tell from. Yeah, that was from the banks. Yeah, yeah. the banks. I had to look at it. Yeah. yeah there was there was a sequence in in like that that magazine of him doing it instant mm -hmm. grab. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really like, sick. Killing like real like, like committed. You know. Not, not yeah. like hovering over it, like actually, he, he had that low stance too. You could tell. Yeah, you have to yeah, be he was, he was, he was like really good that. friends with um, 
what's that? Um, Nick Hartman from FR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he was an FR guy, and he um, and Ryan Jacklone, like they're best friends. And there's another guy named um, oh, I forgot his name. The whole FR, the whole FR like foundation, like there was just he was part of that, and yeah, and um, he also was friends with back then with New York. I know that I, fall, I was actually a stalker of him too because I really liked his his stuff. Yeah. Like this whole New York, you know, New York, and they, they they all knew each other, like Harold Hunter and Ron, and yeah, all the totally. Yeah, there's, there's that whole OG mm-hmm. East Coast FR. But yeah, I, think, I, was, I was, what I did hear was that he kind of like got embarrassed of skating a little bit, and he just stopped and couldn't handle the pressure. <laughs> yeah, badass <laughs> motherfucker to stay playing this yeah. day if you start back then. <laughs> Which is the bummer. <laughs> part. Yeah, I think Ryan might have told me that. It kind of bummed yeah, well, me out a lot. Cause I like D light a lot too. <laughs> That's a bummer because like, yeah. especially like the fact that he was associated with FR and like, you, you know, we're talking yeah. about moments that, you know, impacted the history of skating, man. Like FR yeah. was yeah. huge. Yeah. I had, oh, I yeah. Had the, that was the attitude too. You were talking about. Yeah. I had the, the, chain, yeah. OG. The FR yeah. chain. Yeah. That's the loyalty. Yeah. When you bought it, I was like, Ooh, mm-hmm. loyalty. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm loyal to this shit. And then, you know, you take a shower and you leave a green ring around your neck. Cause it was a bad, a bad metal. <laughs> but damn. FR yeah. man. That was a, that was a hell of a time. Hey eh, John. Yeah. It's, it's uh it stands to this day, that logo and that, that your wheels suck. It's like the whole. Yeah, I guess I, guess, I, mean, yeah. I, wasn't, I wanted to be a part of it. I just wasn't, you know, I, it was, Super it, New York. It made, it made Senate look whack, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. It was like, this yeah. is like way tougher, you know? Fucking tough, like, yeah. <laughs> it's sick. It was attitude. And, and that Ryan was behind it. And um, that there was this, I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was this MTV thing on FR and Nick Hartman. Yeah. And Ryan was in it. Mm-hmm. And the guy, I keep forgetting his name is right now. Uh, he was in it too. They're just cruising the streets of New York, but they made it. It's all good. Ortega was in it too. Ortega was in it too. Yeah. Um, but they were cruising through the streets of New York, and Nick talked about relating, and he had that attitude like, "We don't care. We just cruise through the streets." And yeah, it's yeah. Kind of, kind of thing. I don't know if you guys saw it, but yeah, it it was sick. It, it made um, an impact for me for sure, um, and a lot of people. So, yeah. but he was on TV, on MTV a lot actually, huh? I think you got it. That guy. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Another coolest thing about FR is like, like I believe Nick Hyman was part of Team Rollerblade, and he got yeah. Right. He got kicked out. That's why yeah. he's like, he started That's his own right. wheel. So he's like the yeah. first blade that is like, fuck the system. I'm going to yeah. start my own shit. And then that part means F roll blade, right? Like yeah. roll blade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jack can't say that. He was kids. controlling the market. Sorry. Yeah. So they, he was like, <laughs> I'm going to go find your thing. I'm going to make my wheels. Yeah. And they made cool logos. He showed boobs on the, in the wheels. <laughs> like, he was saying he was, he was not into that whole thing of being controlled of like a certain way in a box. He was like, and I'm going to yeah. put weird message on the back and this 1-800 number of, of, of other cool things. Like, now he brought yeah. culture. He brought New York in the front line. Like, we had cool. The ads kids. were cool. Yeah, they yeah. had like a pretty, pretty neat New York. Yeah. 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 It shows, so how good this, <laughs> it shows how good this marketing is too. Cause like you don't even need the good product. Like same thing with mind game. They weren't necessarily known for having really good wheels, but Shane's marketing behind that was what made mind game such a powerful company. And it's just a wheel company, not even a skate company. Same thing with FR was that same style just in the nineties. Just yeah. in that attitude. You could say the same thing from the original USD products, you know? Yeah. So it was like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't finished yet. It was just starting and mm-hmm. but the marketing was there. The people behind it were mm-hmm. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got the marketing, you got the people, and then you have a good foundation to grow off of. And, yeah. And we, can, I, I personally can learn from those things. I have been learning from those things for a long right. time. So. Mm-hmm. But you have to eventually make a good product. Like. Oh yeah, always. definitely. Yeah. You yeah. have to make yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to. This isn't well, a lesson for everybody out there to start a shitty company right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not about, it's, it's okay to start with a shitty wheel company or whatever company you leave all to better, but you motherfuckers out there buying pro, don't expect the skates sc- and I, I jerk you off and make you a better skater. Like, be humble about it. You don't need a futuristic skate. You don't need a fucking billion dollar skate to have fun. Like, if it's skate feel uncomfortable as part of the pain, you pay the price, have fun. You know, it's like, it's like you know, <laughs> I believe in technology, but we don't have to come go back to like the skates there, they look like. They're about to take off in a rocket, like looking all crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> simple, is, 
yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, it's good about product, but don't go crazy on technology. Be kind of a little humble because, come on, like, come on, like, what are we going to do yeah. with the next K2 that fucking go to the moon and back or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's not the K, it's you, you know? Anyway, keep going. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's cool. Um, I was actually, you know, I was thinking because a lot of the time, like, and I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit here, but uh, we're talking about watching the stuff on MTV, seeing it grow, like growing up, uh, Arlo and you skated the MTV music festival, John, like, and the whole thing with like Josh Petty on that stuff. And, and I think that was actually a huge moment for blading too, because as a kid who skated looking on MTV and then like seeing like Josh Petty, like obviously a horrible acceptance speech, like really bad, but like, <laughs> oh. he, like his, <laughs> there's the cat, Come on. but like, um, where are you going? Yeah, but it's, yeah, what was that like in that time? Just like the hype. You, you know, it, it was tough. The belief it, it on was, like the, the, what, the potential of what could be in skating. Yeah, and just it was, like it was too energy. soon for us. In my opinion, it was too soon for us. Mm. Yeah. Because we were, we were, we were like in this, I mean, how old was Blading then? 10, not even 10 years old. Or, no, not 10 years, not even close. Yeah, like, we were, it was too early for us. I wish that happened now. Yeah, you know? but like, I was hanging out with like, I mean, I would, me even before that. An example: me and Randy were hanging out with Mark Gonzalez and Danny Way and and uh, Colin McKay. We were we were like going to Switzerland doing demos, like me and Randy. Randy probably doesn't even know that. He probably <laughs> talk about now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that was them, <laughs> you know? Like, but I knew who they were, and not that we were a bad representation, but not that our blading. Like not that the MTV was the bad realization of waiting, but I, I just feel like it just we didn't have the year. We, I was like they, we were like, like Air Costin and and Tony Hawk and you know what I mean. I, w- I want to talk like us five that. years old. I want to talk us that. Real quick, the actual event, going to the event, it was impactful. Yeah, I get that. I get that part, but yeah, um, me being a, spe- a person in it, it I just. I had some great experiences. I got to hang out with Tribe Called Quest and Wu Tang, but That's like sick. I feel like maybe it did do diligence on TV for sure for skating. And I think the skating was good on on TV. So maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaking myself and yeah. overboard on the other stuff. But I just did you know, go on tour with Tony Hawk? Yeah, well, we did events. I mentioned then. that in one of his things, like defending rollerblading. He's like, yeah, when I had yeah. no money, I was going on tour with rollerblading. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there he he was. I mean, when I was younger, I would go to Warp Tour with Scotty and Jess and Skeet Caballero. They were all there, you know. They were making money off it, and so were Bladers making the same money, you know. Like Tony Hawk was doing the demos. At, I think that was also wow. Warp Tour, but like, um, I, I I guess I'm losing my tangent on here, but it, I I guess the whole thing with the the MTV thing, I think it was def- probably really great, as you said. To be, I mean, it was great to be involved in it, but I just, I mean, I remember like Tim Ward being on there, skating the half pipe on stage, and then um, Offspring was like, "I don't want Bladers on stage," you know, like it's like whack. It's like, no, that's how that I'm started. Talking. Yeah, yeah. 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 I thought it was from the skate Tim Ward, I got some crazy stories too. And, and then it's like, and, and then, us like and that? Being, yeah, and then being. But, but I mean, we, I mean, not that the blading was represented really well, like it was great. You didn't but... want us to come out and play? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, <Fucked I'll>... up. <laughs> see, I, I, what I see as a fan, because I, I, I was not much invited to none of those contests. I was not like, you know, up there. I was just watching as a fan. But I, what I keep seeing it, and I was feeling then, and I still feel now looking back, is that, yeah, we had that generation that were, they were exposed to travel with guys like Danny Wade and all that stuff. And like Mark Gonzalez, those guys have been for 20 years doing this shit. But I just, we, you, we can see that we have our first pros like Tom and Renes and all that stuff. And companies were just so focused on keep doing contests and all stuff. They were not mentally organized to be like, okay, wait a minute. We need some of those OG older guys to be like, Right, more in control of these guys, yeah, of the new agree, kids, yeah. so we can go to those places. And I those dudes watching. got along, yeah. like Fry and all those guys, Tony and Scotty. They're all yeah, they're, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. So draw them, and, them and speed them out. Yeah, as soon as they got older. 
And yeah. they're all like, let's get the next kids without parenting, without having heroes. It's not like us right now that, you know, we go to a, we go, example, for example, we go to uh, this UK tour that we did with them, right? And JJ is there. And then we got, yeah. we, we, got we got all the younger guys there. And John is the leading. We did, there was none of that. It may be a team manager, but there's not a blading in charge of making blading look cool. It's just throwing those kids out there to deal with the other guys that have been 20 years getting paid the same money as these kids. Of course, they're going to hate bro blading. We don't have a system. The system was wrong from the beginning. I think maybe you know? that's what I was trying to get at a little bit with that. Not that the MTV, it was a bad thing at all. It was actually obviously really good, but like, there's definitely a sense of um, resentment from the pros. Yes. When I was going out on these tours with, with like Randy. the pro skateboarders, yeah, 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 like, I would do demos with uh, Ed Woodward with Randy, and we'd have a hundred kids watching us. We and I'd be doing it with like at the time Tim Brock and some other guys that were on that were pro, and they're just confused. They're like, like some of the guys were cool. They're like, yeah, some, I remember, I remember a couple of them were like, "Don't do that trick. That's whack." Like you know, like, <laughs> like giving me advice. You know, like and that's. And I look back at it now, and that dude was being cool with me. I forgot his name. He was a redhead dude that skated for Nike. I think he skated for Nike. But, like, now I look back in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense, you know? It's like yeah, yeah. going through those times, and maybe it's not an exact time where it was, like, definitive, but there was definitely a scale of things happening in the 90s that um, I can see, like, yeah, we, we needed growth, you know? and, and Yeah. And and we needed time to like figure out um, tricks. Uh, Everything. Uh, Why would he tell you not uh, to do language, tricks? Language, language, you know. Everything. Like, relations, like, like now, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it's even a good example is going to the skate park. Like now, it's just like, no, you know, you're trying to frown on me, like no. Having <laughs> 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 a, a language, the understanding of like, yeah. to appreciate. You know, appreciation, maybe. You know, like back then, we're just little kids. You know? Yeah. You know? And, and the say, older... like, how, how old were you and Randy when, when this was happening? I was like 21. I got 18, 19, 20, 21. And Randy was like, he's like three years younger than me. So he's like 15. I was 18. He was 21. Yeah. I was 24. So, um, still so pretty young. Was, yeah, we're pretty young. I mean, I, for me, I was older, but, you know, I, I understood. I know who the, I know. I understood what was going on. You know, I, I was trying to like navigate myself and and understand like that we weren't the first ones here. You know, at least I was in my head. Yeah. Like I wasn't. Yeah. Like we're not first here, dude. We gotta like respect the territory, maybe yeah. a little bit. You know, like. Yeah. But but if the industry will be listening, the guys that have been here before us, like. All those guys, they will be more in charge. Be okay. Let's, let's be smart about decisions instead of like throwing. And those that had a lot out. to do with the contest too, right? Like, yes. ASA, like yeah, um, the, it, the system was built too close, uh, too young for something so young. Because why? Because of the numbers, it was volume. Of course, we're gonna build a stage for all these kids. Now, what these kids are selling a hot case. Let's make it put it in arena and make more kids buying this shit. And as soon as these guys are getting older, they're asking for more of this. Just kick them out, get the younger ones, and keep using them. So the whole system was built wrong. The system was wrong, built. So it was kind of, it was not wrong. It's just that like it was not the smartest way to do it. And we paid the price. Then we say, ah, fuck the old or whatever. It just happened. But I'm glad we got hate. It makes us grow up faster. I think, yeah, but damn, I the, think fact, the, fact, the fact that that kind of hate was that real like mm, you i had love it bring it on <laughs> you had offspring get on the mic and be like we're not gonna play yeah because there's bladers on the rip yeah. yeah that's crazy and tim Moore is doing like freaking he's doing whack, like, whack, shit. Dude. like that's so, so you have shitty. to under we have to understand the 90s imagine us right now they will be skating for 20 plus years almost 30 years now and then i don't know where these 12 year olds here show up getting paid maybe more than me of course, to do a yeah. couple tricks here. Of course, you're going to be jealous. And back in the 90s, mm. there was no filter. Mm. Like, you know, it was, like, hate was real. Now it's different. But imagine yourself in that situation. Of course, you're going to be like, Well, it's a different time now. No. You can't big, take big. things down in public. You can't. Yeah. yeah it's you can't different. Hate, you can't hate. You can't hate mm. on anything now. So yeah, yeah. Back, back then, then it was just kind of like, you know, you watch, you watch, you know, the Michael Jordan thing is kind of interesting. Like, they just punch each other in the face. 
the, uh, the Jordan documentary and the games. Like, they just straight up fucking, they're, now you can't, you know? Now, <laughs> you, you can't foul now, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's def- it was definitely different. Different, yeah. And I'm, and I'm yeah. proud of that, man, because we're the last generation that really had it like that. Scooter kids, nobody can say that shit. Mm-hmm. We had it. Like, we had it yeah. good. Like, like, the good and the really bad. Like, but you know what? Now it pays back. I think we're in the best position. I'm glad we'll go through that shit. To get this push away from other contests, to be, call us ourselves. Hardest thing about being a rollerblader is being gay. Like, think about that stuff. That's actually, like, come on. Like, we went through yeah, that. They were like, they were like full yeah. on campaigns. They were like campaigns with like rainbow yeah. flags. Yeah, so, advertisements like yeah so i think i think we grew up in a gnarly place and we hit rock bottom with whatever we happened and they don't want us on stage they don't want us to be there and they make us this cultural joke about the whole thing which it was really gnarly but you know what man like they make us who we are right now and we are the generation of like I'm just <laughs> doing me i'm gonna do a, i'm gonna solve my life away fuck you what you mm. think like this feels good you know so it's sick i think yeah, we went through that, but it's whatever, man. Like, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we don't have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's like, <laughs> I, yeah, it was. Yeah, we were really young to be up there, but we we had the the right people to make us. We we were we were be able to have the right people to help us swim through that river and those hard times, but we pushed them away. Mm-hmm. We risked, like we we didn't we didn't listen like we didn't see like. They're doing contests. We're doing all these things, and rollerblading is happening over here, and this whole thing is happening, going to shows and everything. Rollerblading is happening here, and they were the thing was not like this. It was kind of like, so that we we got fucked. Of course, we were playing the same stage as the Rolling Stone. We were not even know how to play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I like all. that example. That's real. That's real. <laughs> I like that example. Well, um, but it's what it is. Let's yeah. go back to referencing this, this list again, because there's a lot of good shit on here, and we've already been going for like over an hour already. So I want to make sure we get to as many of these uh, things as possible. It's, it's supposed to last like 20 hours, dude. <laughs> 20 Sorry. hours, at least. At I'm least. I'm going to shut up. No, we we, we got to break this into another episode. Do you, I'm going to refill. I'll be right back. Do it, yeah, go for it. Um, <laughs> the Mr. Moose Knuckle lurches Royale to Alley Topsail. You put that down. And TJ Weber's True Soul. But the, I remember the lurch Royale to Alley Topsail that – people have been known to say that as the lurch when you do that switch up. And there's no switch up that has like a name to it at all. Yeah, it's like a nickname. I really catch up, but it was true. It's the lurch. <laughs> like, like, kind of did. It, it, it kind of did, but like, and like, there was no daily bread or, or send a company saying the lurch. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Of course. Sadly. It, but but why, crazy. why was but that? We can call it. Why was it called the lurch? Did he do it just more than everyone else or like, no, it doesn't first to do it or? There were people like Rolling Stone, a bunch of people did Royale to Alibi Soul, tapping uh-huh. and sliding, but nobody actually like... Oh, because he held it. And, it, like, it we, we go back again to the, the, what we're talking about, like how we're skaters, that it's more about the tricks. There's something, tricks really talk. Mm-hmm. Like this style behind it. There's something that much people don't understand. It's like, he just switches feet. But mm-hmm. then people that know, they know, they feel this. It. like, whoa, that was really deep. Like, you know, so Lars did it right. Like he did it. Like, like of course. Like that was like that was one of those moves that it, it, it really tells. Like you can make really make cool. You can really make it something that people don't. Somebody can really do it right. Mm-hmm. You know, like something about it that everybody was like, that's something. One of those sparks in your face of like, wait a minute. You know, like there's something else. There's just something that needs to be explored. Mm-hmm. And it didn't gotta explode explore much, but it did a little bit and it, it look at now. Yeah. Yeah. To hold an alley top saw on a rail that long back then was like yeah. super. And not legit. just that, but not just that, but it's just the stance of it. Like the stance. And then we're talking back again, like the different like when we talk about like Tom Fry doing certain things, you know, and Lurch and all this generation, like Arlo, it's certain things that you do that really tell something else. Like I can do a front side, but then somebody else can do a front side. They look completely different. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what, guys? What you, you guys know what I'm talking about because we're players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that motion right there, I think it really told something to rollerblading. Like, you know what I mean? Like, after that, the, the switches were not walking. There was a motion and a stance on it, you know? I think mm-hmm. you know, some people really caught on that. I think it was very sick. 
TJ Ware, by the way, were so ahead of the time that we just saw a flash in the sky. We didn't realize they were fucking off this. And he just threw out his soul disaster to forward. Yeah. You know, everyone was focused on grabbing a match and having the biggest yeah. hands. While he was yeah. doing truth to out his soul. I remember seeing that I remember seeing that stuff, like going back and looking. And actually some of that stuff came up on like Instagram recently, but when I, w- I went back and I watched like Moose Knuck on like 2000, I was like, oh man, he true all sold the rail. Or you yeah. go back and you see like Corey Miller, like th- 360 yeah, Unity. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Like these, these moves that were like people were doing back then, but like TJ specifically. Yes. He got that so, Arlo stance. He got that thing. Mm-hmm. He like, it's funny. Cause like, awesome. you know, it's like, I let like DL is like one of my favorite skaters. It's a lot of our favorite skaters. But that famous stale 540 that DL used to do on, like, the, the launch box. Mm. Like, and just like, oh, like, he got that from TJ. Like, that was TJ's thing. He had, like, the best stale 540s ever. It was, like, Slay Bio. Blake got it from him. Abdiel got it from him. <laughs> All that generation, they were amazing. He was, thanks to that quiet dude turning left when everybody was doing this. He was mm. doing his own. And he was, you know, see what, you know, you saw what he last, you know, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like nobody really paid much attention to it, but it, it really make an effect. Then it was dusting and you just can see back to, you look about TJ, you're like, that's the rollerblading thing that we're talking before when we first started talking about this non, this, this, this thing that you cannot talk about. It's just something that you feel that you see. It's like, it's that language thing, you know, that rollerblading really have it that we haven't tapped much. And it's beautiful. You know, it's like, and fucking, he had it, dude. Like, he, TJ had it. Like, I don't know much about TJ's <laughs> history, but you could tell he was one of those people who, like, knew how to skate really well. Like, just yes. skating in general, his skating was on point. I don't know if he had, like, a hockey background, too, but he definitely had that separated him back then. Well, fucking he, was ahead, he was ahead of his time. His mm-hmm. skating was yeah. ahead of his time. That's your favorite skater, right, John? One he's of your favorite one of them. skaters. Yeah. yeah, he's one of them. He's... Yeah, he was doing the DL stuff. Like, you guys already said it. He was doing the DL stuff. Before DL yeah. was doing it, he mm-hmm. took it to the next level, of course. But like, he had the uh, natural. I think it's a natural, kind of a natural talent that you know you can just. I don't know. He can do everything, and with the, some kind of fluidity that he just, yes. like in Miguel was saying, he was just he has it. He had it. He and, has it. He had it. Yeah. Like that's, I don't know. The people that had it. <laughs> the personality didn't want to keep doing it, or I don't know. He just fell out of it, but which is a shame because he was that Moose Knuckle video. That was a long time ago, dude. Like, 95, 96. Yeah. Come out yeah. now. That shit is just as good. You know, yeah. you get. Oh, still, yeah. Still, mm-hmm. it kills that a lot of things. Be mm-hmm. Dude, every, like, I was there when he did that 540 in LA and into the street, and it was insane. <laughs> like, it just didn't make any sense. It was kind of interesting because during that time we had, we moved into yeah he moved in we moved into editing uh, the volume video together and I don't know if he took a back seat there on skating I don't call it back seat but he kind of slowed down on the skating type type side of things yeah because he got into editing and he was doing he did like the motion graphics in the England video I don't know kind of lose his time frame yeah with K two because he was pro for K two and then. Oxygen got oxygen shut down and K2 yeah, grabbed him. And got, there, there's like, there, there's Tom, money situation Tom there. That you, and yeah, there's Keith money. Really good friends. Yeah. So they had this whole vibe going with, with Ortega too and Jack Lone. So, and our, oh, sorry, uh, Rise Above. That was a big thing. Yeah. That they were really cool yeah. out of Morro Bay, that clothing company, yeah. that whole kind of, kind of like a FR vibe to it. Yeah. Thinking about yeah, it. Now. Rise Above was awesome. Yeah. I remember the, yeah. yeah, kind of FR vibe. Like, um, I think his name was Martin. Really cool surfer. He's a surfer dude. Like they were based out of Morro Bay. The other owner was working at a video action sports at that time. The video action sports was a uh, the, the biggest distributor of skate videos and surf videos and snowboard. Yeah. And the, one of the owners of the our, um, Rise Above, I think, the partner, crazy guy, but he was a partner in Rise Above as well. So they had this like surfer like vibe to the whole. Yeah, Rise above yeah. thing going mm-hmm. too. So it's old. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it all transitioned. I don't know where, where TJ went after that, but he he now he edits for TMZ. I don't know if you guys know that. Oh really? <laughs> I didn't know. Wow. He's, he's been doing that for years. So. Oh shit. 
all that TMZ stuff. I'm pretty sure he's editing it or doing color. Busy, busy. Damn. That's he's crazy. Busy. Busy. Yeah. He's been doing it for like 20 years, something crazy. Oh, shit. So, wow. Jeez. Yeah. But he's still hey. skating, I think. Oh, really? Heiser told me he skated not that long ago. Where does he, he live? Them skates. That's the only reason why I know. <laughs> Did he buy them from you? <laughs> you would know if he bought them from you. No, not from me. Uh, not from me. Um, that was so, sick. You have a little um, tracker on everybody who buys a pair of them skates? You like uh, on, on my site, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the friends and homies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. I, oh, by the way, I, uh, I'll tell you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's get going to John. Tell us why Roadhouse's section in VG3 was such a like monumental moment, I guess, in skating back then. Uh, it was the, I would say it was the first rollerblading section. Really? Yeah, in my opinion, like street section, yeah. like it was the first. And what I mean even better is because it's Randy's the personality, of course, but it was Randy, the personality, and the tricks that he was doing because no one was going that big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no one had the personality. Not. He was that um, fifteen-year-old kid that we need that 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 was gonna push it to the younger kids. And, and he did. Yeah. He he he. Uh, with that section, he influenced a generation of skaters. All the younger so, kids. Younger yeah, there kids. Was, there yeah. was like all the younger guys like Matty Mance and <clears throat> Corey Nelson. and It could have been Fox. any one of those kids. That, that yeah. was Roadhouse, but it was Roadhouse. And Dave, was Roadhouse, yeah. Dave found it, or he was in Orange or wherever town they were in at the time, Corona Del Mar, and Dave was there. And it just it sparked. It sparked everything. Yeah, and, and and it sparked the whole Orange County scene here. It sparked rollerblading. It sparked street skating. It sparked oh, shit, yeah. G four, G five, G six. Everything that totally. came out, my part. Everything that 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 started this next after hoax too. There was this generation of our culture that Dave documented that, and that started with Dave, with Randy's part. Was that really and, the first street skating? And Randy's skating. In my opinion, I, I feel like yeah. I, I think, think it was. I guess, right? I can't think of a part that everything happened. was a montage. Yeah, I don't think there was parts yet. Holy shit! I never thought about that. That's crazy. I don't think there was. Hoax one was a montage. Hoax yeah, two hoax two is the same thing. Well, well, there was a there was a part. I, Tom, Tom and Chris Edwards have a session at the end of their uh, at the end of uh, one of the first blading videos. I forgot. Not there to air. Yeah, there to bottom air. Bottom line. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. At the end of bottom line. It was a split session that I was really stoked about. I was like, finally, like a section mm -hmm. because I was yeah. already. Then, I used to watch people's sections and skateboarding mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I, and it was Tom and Art and uh, Tom and Chris. They go to downtown LA. That's why I'm so attached to downtown LA and go skating and park the car and go mm -hmm. because they did that, you know. And they filmed this, this session of their, them two skating and that gives soul. But it was not like a full section of like that was maybe filmed like a day. Yeah, yeah. But then nobody companies didn't give a. Uh, they, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. I know that. <laughs> companies didn't. Companies didn't care. It was not the the priority. But 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 thanks to thanks to Dave Payne, he care about personalities and kids. That's what it is. The people and Dave was like this this clip. Yeah. And I'm glad that happened because that that right there was like it gave room to this actual thing that is so mm -hmm. sick but it was not because of the companies or the industry or whatever it was the, the, there was another priority like into a skater grab it and be like all right let's do this that's one of the first thing and that's why randy's things happen and jj things happen you know because it happened mm -hmm. thanks to that so shout out day pain holy hell I, I feel like my mind is blown <laughs> right now realizing that was pretty much the first like proper street section and I never, it just completely went over my head all these years. And, and, and after that, in that video, there were sections. You yeah. could appreciate the yeah. different kinds of skating. Yeah. Because there was the park, yeah. skate parks, there was the street, the rails, the lines. Mm -hmm. Basically labeled, these are the different kinds of things that you can do. Well, that's what, yeah. video, that's what Dave was doing with VG, the park section, the contest section, the yeah. rail section, the connection, the lines, whatever. And he like laid it all out for you so you knew the different parts of skating yeah, yeah before social media there was vg yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> but that goes into john's section in vg4 which miguel you said you put it on your list for one of 
No, oh, that yeah, part I so. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, but like I said before, like I, you know, I'm, I'm coming from the era like, yeah, like proper skating, sand tricks have to look a certain way, or whatever. Like, I have a huge skateboarding background, BMX. I, I used to watch Way Spayer, like video part in '91 to go rollerblading, you know, because there was no sections of people, you know, just in a motorhead or whatever. So like, there was, and we didn't find that in rollerblading, right? Into those things, and the personality was not presented. But then like Randy session and JJ happened, and like. And I see JJ like skating in a certain way that everybody's doing it correctly, pushing a certain way, like pushing and landing and doing like so grand, the standard this, the standard that. And then you got like JJ that is like basically hip hopping his way around and just creating motions, like creating motion, you know, that creation of mo. I saw right there, I was like, there is more to the blading thing. There is an actual, a language of body motion that you can you, like skating is not man i saw right there that skating is roving is not man ma maneuvering something it's whole, your whole body how you like like before and after a trick like there was something there's a language in it and when i saw jj's part i was like whoa there is a huge world there like that there's so much to like there's something that that was rollerblading like this whole abstract thing that everybody can have it but nobody be able to have it until they 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 click with themselves and and just do their thing and they just like you know there was a there was a talk in skating you know that jj brought that like the style like like creating like like like, like you know what i mean it makes sense what i'm trying to say it's so hard to explain Absolutely. it's so Absolutely. hard but when i saw it as a kid i was like and my brother saw it we look at each other like all right like there is some motion here. This is so sick. Like <laughs> there, there is this thing that to explore that we see it now. Like we still see it. Like a lot of kids are pretending out there. You know, JJ was not pretending. He was skating on his own. <laughs> shit. <laughs> you can't pretend style. That's what I mean. It's so. It was style before style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that whole mo it was a motion. It was a. I mean, people stamping on it now, but it, it, that JJ part did really on my person. I don't know, brought that thing, you know, brought that extra thing that is that language that we can, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was just really sick. Sorry, JJ. <laughs> 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 it, 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 it just I appreciate to it, this y'all. It's cool. It's I mean, magic, it's this magical thing, like, you know what I mean? Like, like people can pretend the way they like, but it's like, it, it really tap into that world of like, really thick skating that's something that you watch and you like for life you know what i mean yeah, i think bring... dg4 is like a turning point yes that, you know because there was also you know jason marshall was in there <laughs> like John and, and Carr, that was John Carr. yeah yeah the faces like that um, thing. Just, just, dude, just like trying, that man. era was just really starting to make it its own and start refining yes. at that point Right. Maybe the video was catching up to what was happening too. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, I remember VG3, not even Randy's part, but there were a lot of like really crazy moments in that video. Like, they're talking about Shrine, the line section, and there is this thing on the floor. It's really long. It's the snake. He just like front sides it. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what the fuck he's doing. He's like, he's like, what's like, Shrine doing? He's grinding. He's grinding the floor. You know, he found he found something on the floor that you can grind. Like yeah. that's, and it's street, but it was in the street, and you're just kind of like, what the fuck did I just see? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So, Glory. at the time, there was a lot of stuff happening on skates that that those two videos were were just documenting. You know, whether it be the Unity grind or whether it be grinding obscure things or or trying different things in the street that hasn't been done yet because before that you had air to air you had hoax two and yeah. there were there was very simple things happening front side soul grind and alley soul was a fucking mind-boggling thing to my in my mind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But then there were no but videos was documenting it and yeah, then all of a sudden yeah. you saw bg3 bg2 was like a culmination of things that people just like just sent the really shitty quality and then yeah. it was VG3, it was just like skyrocketed to like, like, like what skateboarding was doing basically. They were, they had 411, they had like, um, 
organized media. Yeah, and we never yeah. had that. We had organized media all of a sudden. We had like personalities. We had different people besides Arlo, besides Brooke, besides there's Roadhouse. Like this kid yeah. is sick. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Like I want to be that kid. Yeah. Like, I want to be like Arlo. And um and I as me, I was in there, but like I can I appreciated now I look back, I appreciate it more than ever because it it definitely it was one of those VCRs that you just kept on great. You played it to yeah. the you know? Yeah, yeah. There's moments in there that are embedded in people's brain, my brain too. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and anyway. I think that that's the moment. That is the actual moment when that it's not that we 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 copy skateboarding or stop BMX or whatever. It was that moment of VG3 and VG4 where when you think behind, when you think before those videos, like for example. Um, I think it's not there to air. I forgot the other one. Um, anyway, all the videos were made just by larger companies. They just throw some money, get some filmers. Yeah, They're not even bladers. Just document, yeah, document this shit and throw videos out there so people get addicted to it. But then, but then in those VG3 and VG4, the actual skaters were like the ones that I'm like, I'm in charge of this and I'm going to present this shit that is cool. I'm going to put the power of my energy and time on showing this neat thing and that's why we all got engaged because it's sick because it was not just like two second clips of like this guy this guy the other guy the other guy really is this collage of things no it's stop happening this random collage with like maybe good cameras because they use good cameras back then but like other than hoax too those vgs were like actually people out there that we can see and like normal average street kids that they put in the actual clips and like kind of like showing these video parts and like actually you know explaining the thing instead of a bunch of flashes of things it's actually showing like a blader that's yeah, so basically it's a blader blader showing blading you can tell there's love put into it yeah that when the blader mm -hmm. starts showing blading mm -hmm. that whole shit makes sense mm -hmm. and everybody got engaged right the, the real ones just really engaged and it was not that we just copy something else yeah we might be inspired about other people but not because Jimi Hendrix was watching somebody else touching the, playing the guitar. We're not going to say Jimi Hendrix sucks because he, he copied somebody else. No, it's, it's, it's the same shit. It's a natural mm -hmm. evolution when you grab the things by the ball and you make it yours on your, on your own people, things work. And that's mm -hmm. what VG did. And a skater grabbed it and put it out there and you were like, this is sick, you know? And that's what the whole thing born, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went in a crazy trip. Sorry, cut me up. Let's get <laughs> no, no, no. Did, did it make any no, sense? You know, you know, you know. It's crazy because all this stuff was popping off at the same time. Like, you know, the the videos, the VG, like the progression of skating, and in the midst of all this, there was the birth of X Games and the ASA. Do you guys remember the beginning stages? I, re of I remember the, the whole shit. I was so crazy because I didn't get invited, but whatever. <laughs> My friend you, says you wanted to, want to get invited to the first one. I wanted to go to first 94 Nice with Moises and all those guys. I was too poor. I was living in Quebra. You see my town? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It looks beautiful. There was no GoFundMe like back then. Skate park there. there was no GoFundMe back then. There was no GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these things were happening. Yeah, like, but the cool thing about this whole VG and this whole thing about the Bladers Gavin thing, the whole thing was like, it was not something created by some move, by taking advantage of this, this new toy. It was like the toy is already built. It kind of evolves a little bit, and then the skaters start creating this content. You know, it was it was like it was everything that happened so quick was back then. But like thanks to those DJs and stuff, like the whole toy really became a thing, and that mm -hmm. makes sense, you know. Yeah, the yeah. contest is whatever, but like this was the real thing. <laughs> we're gonna probably wrap this up in a little bit because we're going like an hour forty minutes. But I like Billy where you were going with like the contest because we didn't really talk about contests that much except for like the MTV thing. But um, in the beginning days and stuff like that, one, John, one of the things that you said was Ryan Jack alone's Misty Flip at one of like the <laughs> ASAs or something like that had a big impact. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, contest wise, like the NIST contest was the biggest one. The yeah. first one? NIST, NIST, National yeah, NIST. First. NIST. And Arlo, Arlo won that first one in 94, I think it was, or 93. Was the first one. That it is? was in Huntington Beach. I remember watching that on TV. Like, I want to be the there. The finals were in Venice. Finals, it was a circuit. The finals were yeah. in Venice. Arlo. Those are the purple ones, I remember, right? It was on repeat. I remember I had it on 
recorded it off of ESPN yeah. or whatever it was. He his switched line. backside in his line, dude. Yeah. Then the, the gnarly switch backside. Switch backside grinds. And nobody, oh. knew, nobody knew what back switch. On, on yeah, natural back then. Yeah. But the, the rails were gnarly. Line. The spot, the, the courses were gnarly, you know? Like, yeah. The top rail. rails. And the death <laughs> rail. Yeah. Death rail. And, 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 and you always wondered who all these other people were from. Like, Hiro Kazuito, like. Yeah. So many random people, like there's something, there's like a big Chris Hines. Yeah, Actually, there was Chris, Chris Hines. Yeah. <laughs> it was really crazy. Like, but again, again, that 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 the thing is like it was so good that that ESPN saw how good that thing was. Like, and yeah, they saw it before with skateboarding contests like Vision Contest and '86, but that nobody had realized how far you can go with contests on TV. And then next after, next after this, ASA was great. Next thing you know, the whole rollerblading thing, the whole skating thing was focused on just contests. Mm -hmm. And it was just TV. And it was like, yeah, it was good. But, like, skating was here. Like, our skating, like, we were talking about VG and these personalities are here. And then contests is happening here. And, they, and no, never, ha like, never, like, it was evolving so wrong. Like, this is not, contests were not ready for this and and then nothing was ready for either one you know <laughs> so contest so came too soon all the televised shit yeah because we were the guinea pigs of what happening with skateboarding right now and all the action sports and the olympics and everything we were the guinea pigs we were like the ones that they used the little kids to put it in the, in the competition and see how much people we can ratings we can get and it worked out great you know we were the testing of this thing x games were so great because rollerblading was huge back then so kids mm -hmm. engaged on tv Mm -hmm. and that's the thing. A, a, a lot of people don't know that rollerblading was in the first X Games. Yeah, it was the only. It was the like it was the new toy. Like yeah, all the kids thing. were sitting there to watch that. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like, everybody. There was so like, much money in skating in the early mid nineties, and and there was opportunity. So that 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 competition is a natural progression in, in, with money. You know, mm -hmm. it's the easiest way to yeah, present for the millions. And, create a tournament and it's not it's it's just an obvious thing to have tournaments you know in anything and in any sport yeah yeah so yeah it, it actually in my opinion it brought people together from all over the world yeah definitely and totally competition does so and i think it was a good thing for sure it, was, it, it, it made me want to go want me to compete mm -hmm. and want me to see all these people and see all this culture that was out mm -hmm. there that i didn't know had mm -hmm. these many people from all over the world actually yeah. doing it too. Yeah. Because it was yeah. so new. So in my opinion, this was the beginning at all for me because that was the first contest that I ever saw on TV. And then the X Games was second. The X Games was mm -hmm. right behind it. And because that's what I saw first. Maybe X Games was first to people, I don't know, but and Did I you saw ever the X Games. Games that, John? What's that? Did you ever the skate X Games? Games? I did. I skated X Games in San Diego. Um, one year, I think I got seven. I skated terrible. I don't know how I got seven. <laughs> I, I, got I mean, seventh back then is pretty sick. You know? Yeah, no, I made like a top ten. I made is good, money. Right? I made yeah. money. Yeah, but I was, I was embarrassed because I skated terrible. I remember how <laughs> well, that's embedded in my brain. Um, what contest was it? I, where you did like the classic, like the rocket fish round, the death rail, and like the flat on it too. Or like you did like a monorail to rocket fish. Oh, that's this. Champion Nine, right you there. won that one, right? I won that so one. That yeah, made that's, that was ninety six, and, and well, that was what I was trying to get to. Is like Arlo won the first year, TJ Weber won the second year, or something, and then yes, Cameron won third, but I won the fourth one, and I was like, mm -hmm. after that, it was just yeah. I was never home mm -hmm. throughout the ninety six to to, to two thousand one. I wasn't home a weekend with Randy. Me and Randy were just gone, and yeah. those were the and from my life, like my life changed. I was you know, glory days. This the glory, glory days. days together. Yeah, <laughs> me and Randy were like we would go to Europe one weekend and then go home, and then the following weekend we would be in Europe again. Like, mm -hmm. what the hell did we just do? Why did we just stay in Europe? You at know, like, like at like nineteen twenty <laughs> or some shit. So weird. Yeah, at our mm -hmm. ages, like we we're just like those are the days where we were with Tony Hawk or Danny Way, and we didn't. We were just like you know. You know what the hell we're doing? We're just mm. adolescent, you know. Yeah, it, 
Then yeah, Danny Wade, are the rumors true? Are the rumors true about Danny Wade? Does Danny Wade hate, hate, hate rollerblading? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he <laughs> That's he sucks. hates it hard as hell, no, right? Really? I don't know him personally enough to be like, yeah, but yeah, I don't think he's well, like, I, I, I heard I he's wanna, one of the hard maybe, maybe Miguel knows more. I don't know. Yeah. I want to I wanna talk a little bit about the subject, and then I'll talk about that. I want to talk about subject a little bit about the contest thing. I think it was okay. the greatest thing to, in the beginning of the sport, be it, like, that's why Robin is so international, because at the very beginning of it, it was not just a California thing. Yeah, it was a California thing, but at Brian 94, Everybody from all over the world got together and got the world together. And next thing you know, skating is all over the world now, mm-hmm. which was great. And then all these contests happened. It really nurtured this whole thing, right? But what, when we failed was that then it was we got stuck in this contest mentality for way too long. And then rollerblading is happening here, right? And, and, and then it was like contest, contest, contest. And there's kids that... Their first time they put their skates on, they know they're going to compete. And the last day they put their skate, they took their skates off because they hit it it's because they were focused just in contests. Why? Because they never find out about this underground part, like VGs and all this stuff. They were really showing culture because all the money, yeah, there was a lot of money rollerblading. But where that money was going for? To, like, make more contests. They was out of control. And just to get those kids and just flying into the contest all the time and nobody's nurturing if that money was going to both in contest and nurturing the actual culture, it would be in a different place. But we got so minded of just contest that a lot of kids just got burned out. A lot of uh, pros too, because pros, they were so good. They couldn't keep up with the 16 year old there in gnarly. There was nothing else to for, for those adults guys that were really sick. So what they did, they just got burned out, kicked out, chew up a speed up and rollerblading. And we just keep getting new kids into the contest. So there was this thing about like, you watch old videos, it's crazy. Arlo Eisenberg, 22 years old. He's a veteran on the sport. Like, call him in old. I, I mean, this is a big thing for me, too. Like, I totally agree with you, Miguel. Like, yeah. I, I, I knew that I wasn't a contest guy, but yeah. I wanted to escape him. It was fine. You know, if I did well, great. If I didn't, shitty. But I knew within the companies and brands and skateboarding and BMX, and even hip hop, like I was really influenced in these cultures. There was a, a scene there a, to create, like there was videos to create, there was clothing to create, there was uh, skates to create. There was something beyond just the competition that yes. I was interested in doing. And that was street skating and filming it and documenting it. And that was, whole culture was created through VG and through skateboarding and through their videos and through BMX videos and through hip hop, going back to that, like there was just, I was more interested in that. And, and what I didn't like about the contest personally was that the contests were creating the pros. They were, yes. they were dictating pros. who was Yeah, pro. like you couldn't be pro skating the street back in the day, right? How was or it was hard jump for not skating the pro contest? No. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it didn't make any sense. He, he wasn't qualified. Well, dude, like he's got a pro that's, skate. Yeah. Like that's, that, that was just that was what I didn't like <laughs> about it. So, and then that also went to into X Games because AFT was running X Games, and and it just turned into me being a rebellious guy, like thinking like corporatism and thank thank God you did. YTA. Like that's what <laughs> that's what we are, and that's why and that's why that was born was because of this whole culture mm-hmm. concept. But it wasn't I wasn't we weren't calling it culture concept, but it was just no. a natural growth of why I am YTA was created was because we wanted a competition series that that was for street skating and yeah. i know it wasn't just me it was just it was a lot of people it was daily bread it was, yeah it was like a lot of people so yeah and that's where they, that was born but yeah. that was the only thing i did I, I mean i liked asa i think it was great yeah, it was great yeah. skating, but i didn't like how we, we couldn't create we could the pros that we were creating through product and our companies weren't going to be considered pro yeah, we we no, what happened it, with it, it, has, sorry. What we let what no. happened was that we let rollerblading skating being run by these contest people that they had all the money, they had the access, all this money. So all the energy was just focused on contest, contest, contest. But but it like, makes sense though, Miguel, because they wanted the athletes that to perform, you know? And that's yeah. That's, and that's so, in my opinion, that's okay. You know, no, that's it okay. Is. Yeah, it, it, it is. Opinion. I was one of those kids. I yeah. did a, a amateur contest for like 
every year to qualify. I, I work, and it makes me a great skater. As, but, and I'm a and I'm a part this. I, I go, I pull runs, and I that's you know it's my. But the whole thing I'm trying to say is that everything, all this, all this organization, all these skaters competing, and we're like, oh, we're doing really good here. We're all doing really good, right? Competition, yeah, we're all good here. And rollerblading, street skating, all this madness is happening over here, and they're here thinking, oh, we're okay. And next thing you know, this business cannot compete against all the other industry like skateboarding and BMX. They're fighting for their bread, right? So they went and they took their business, and then we got kicked out of the X game while Robin is still on this side doing his own thing. So that's why we were not strong. We were not ready to be there. You know, if we were more organized. I mean, if it was us, I mean, if we were running the ASA, it would be different for sure. Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, um, it's just, we were out. It's I like think a, there it, needs to be a room for both, you know. We can yes, talk about it now and yes. have a, and have a uh, parallel with that, you know, like fees. ASA yes. or uh, Olympics, you know, like yeah. they're all necessary things. Everything's but we necessary. also have our culture. Yeah. As long as we control it. Our as culture's as so strong have, now. Yeah. It it's like, exactly. Exactly. It's so now strong we have now. Culture. We've had 25, 30 years to yeah. get and, this shit together. Yeah. And we have social yeah. media to spread it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I mean, going back to the contest thing, I, I just, I was rebellious for sure, like, any, like all of us should be. You know, and but I do I do understand I did understand and appreciated the money that was there for people to get paid. Like mm -hmm. Aaron Feimer make a lot of money, dude. Yeah. You know, like and sponsors would match it too. Yeah, right. Roadhouse made a lot of money. Like mm -hmm. I know he made a lot. Of money. <laughs> <laughs> but like, and that's okay. That's obviously okay. And that needs to come back around for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, you know, we have our thrasher. We have to be thr We have to have our culture. We, you know, for skateboard, we we are it. We're doing it. Like it's mm -hmm. a fucking here yes. for twenty fucking years. You know, mm -hmm. like it's already existing. So yeah. we didn't. I guess going back to the original MTV thing, like to have those years now to 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 have a foundation. All of us here still, like that's what we didn't have, and that's what skate that. The cultures there, we were seeing like the Hawks and the, the Danny Ways, like we they couldn't relate to we couldn't relate to that, and now we can, you know. And mm -hmm. maybe it's not the years, maybe it's just the language, maybe it's just the appreciation for time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and still doing it. Maturity, like, hey, like, hey. maturity. Now we have maturity. I'm fucking forty three, mm -hmm. dude. Like, what are you gonna say to me? You know, it's like, pretty mature. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> know. Everyone's and grown. Everyone's grown. Yeah. When I hear, well, this is one thing that sticks out in my mind in MTV, and as you asked me, earlier, I didn't know how to answer. It was like, I just heard Costin, Costin, Costin in the crowd, you know. And I knew who he was, but I was just like, and I was, a, I was a bit of a fan for sure, but I didn't really appreciate it, you know what I mean, until after. It. And I was just like, dude, like, this dude has been doing it for 30, you know, like 20 years, like mm, yeah. and he's done parts and he's done for the, the, the whole shit. And, mm. and, you know, whether he hates skating or blading or whatever, I don't care, but there's an appreciation that I understand now. Like you got to earn it. You got to earn it. Mm. You got to earn it. Yes. And I, didn't, I didn't hear Arlo, you know, like where's fucking Ar Arlo or mm. Petty? You know, we're like, you know, it's not going to happen. Mm. Yeah. No culture. So even Arlo it was, you know, he wasn't Arlo, he wasn't 40, he wasn't 50, you know? But now it's like, dude, like, it's pretty cool right now. So yes. Arlo got a chance at the Blading well, Cup. You know what, I actually, think, <laughs> I actually think, I think that's a beautiful place to yeah. end. Yeah. Our, like, <laughs> yeah, I've been talking for a while. I agree with that too. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. This part wasn't gonna leave you to take care of your kids, but I think <laughs> we have some, uh, some good stuff to go into in part two, starting with the IMYTA. Yeah, the part and, two will be uh, the modern era. Starting with okay. the, you know, the introduction to like, you know, all this new style, you know, yeah. Vladimir, Happy, everyone yeah. like that, mm -hmm. Roscoe. And yeah, yeah um, I think it was a, a good introduction. I want to keep you guys forever. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel, just, 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 we just, with us. We're just starting here. There's so yeah, much. We got the we're just getting started. Miguel, <laughs> yeah. we could do this yeah. forever. Miguel, I think, Miguel, we might need you as a correspondent to jump yeah. in. <laughs> we might have really? to put you on so the payroll. <laughs> Dude, there's we did a, the third scene. Rollerblading is yeah, fucking yeah. sick, man. Whoever thinking right now, oh, we don't have it like before, like blah, blah, blah. The old days are better. 
fuck you. <laughs> dude, this is cooler than... Dude, fuck. <laughs> this is the best time. Watch your kids' ears, John. In 20 years, we're going to look... <laughs> Sorry. They, they always speak German 20, anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> In 20 years, we're going to look back and we're going to be like, whoa, do you remember that when this guy started that podcast? Do you guys remember when John just fucking entered, push enter with his savings and just start then <laughs> come skates and just fuck it and just put all this money in this shit and just, mm. you, you know what? We're going to look back to like these times where it's so real. Because I gotta there's say no right now, like, like <laughs> I, I just, just today and the conversations I've had with shops and knowing where I am with the company, it's really crazy. Get like, ready you know, it's, yeah, I heard sales are up it's, worldwide. It's 1996. Yeah. yeah. And I'm wow. just thankful that we, I, them, <laughs> you know, it's the right time to be in business yeah. and, and, so today we celebrate good sales, high numbers, and Miguel's birthday. Boom. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miguel. Yeah, you got a Thank birthday you. gift Thank right you. there, Miguel. <laughs> These are the days. These are the days, yeah, These people. are the days. Right now. The John, days. I'm glad to hear all that hard work's paying off, man. Yeah, 100%. I mean, as long it's, as I know it's not really you. like, uh, you know, hit the lottery. You got to no. retire? We, we are, <laughs> yeah, I wish we had the lottery. <laughs> I feel like we have, you know what I mean? And in retrospect to where we've been in blading for the last 20 years, you know, it's like to hear people are, to see the numbers and to, you know, not just aggressive, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing right now. I'll just leave it. it is. So. And then hopefully it keeps going. That's awesome, man. That's beautiful. better for everybody. Really. So happy to hear that. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. This is, this is, this is it. This is beautiful times. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> to the hardest point. All right. Well, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a good part one. We don't want to keep you forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on this uh, another time. And, Thanks for uh, yeah. thank, you, thank you for joining us on our first time having a Zoom podcast in the midst of this very unique time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, President, yeah. Mr. Vice President. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the rest of your birthday today. Maybe you guys are speeding John, in. John's the president. John's the president. Miguel's the secretary of defense. Yeah. Okay. Ready, ready for war. <laughs> yeah. Miguel's the secretary. He's of always there, like ah. <laughs> and this is, a, this is the future right here. Right there. Future. His future. Birthday was yesterday, right? His birthday was yesterday. Yeah. He, oh shit! Happy birthday. Wow. <laughs> they go crazy. Here's <laughs> another one full of passion. Get ready, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, ready to go. <laughs> yes. Oh man, he's good. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining Bye, us. Brother. All right, we'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. I got a hat on. <laughs> Feliz. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> dear Miguel. Compleaños, feliz. Compleaños, feliz. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Okay. I'm gonna click. All right. Hello. Can you hear me? No, right? Yeah. 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 yeah we can hear you. Yeah. So I mute my shit. No. Uh, no, we can hear you. <laughs> I did. not no, we can no, hear you. Didn't. We heard you. We heard you. We, I, I, I think. I think the mute button mute. might be muting us. It might be muting us. The mute button. Ah, this is sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm in the phone. Yeah. I got it. Found it. Test it. Hey, ho puta. You can hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Wow, what the fuck? <laughs>